Hi, my name is Crystal. Welcome to my 214 square foot apartment in Philadelphia. One of the main things that I wanted to make sure existed in this space was space. I'm a licensed massage therapist. I needed space to have my massage table just in case I wanted to do massages here. I had these uh, wall partitions that I ordered from Etsy. They're very lightweight. Originally, I had them at the entrance of the studio, but then it felt like I was walking in a hallway. I didn't really like it there. So then I decided to separate the kitchen from the living space because I kind of didn't want to lay in a bed and look at um, a refrigerator. But in the space where they were, I went to my favorite crystal dealer <laughs> and bought crystals so that I could grid the space. And so I have um, crystals as you come in, so it keeps out any negative energy. I mean, especially if you're living in a studio apartment, you have, you know, maintenance guys that come in when you're not home. There's people who enter your, your space. So I wanted to make sure that there was some healing, gridding going on in here. So in terms of organization and storage solutions, the beautiful thing about this small space is I have three closets. I have a closet for my, that I can store my purses. And I also have a sliding closet where I can put my sweatshirts and my hamper goes in there, my laundry detergent. But I've also incorporated the shoe holders, but I use those for linen. Um, my washcloths, my night clothes. I wear a lot of sarongs and dashikis in the home, and so I roll those up and put them in there. But also, there's a closet that is deep enough to store my uh, massage table, so it's in this space, you don't see it. So Ikea is my best friend, let's just say that. Store solutions at Ikea. I would describe my space as Afro, Bohemian, and a little touch of revolutionary. The bed was the first thing that I bought, um, and it was a twin. And a lot of people who live in small spaces don't think you can have a twin, but I'm here to tell you, you can. A twin is good, it's your friend. You only sleep on one half of the bed anyway. My biggest splurge was my chair and ottoman, and I bought that from Albany Park, um, the Icabo collection. The chair is $8.95, and the ottoman is $6.95. It's velvet. People don't know it's velvet, but it's velvet, and I like it. It's soft when I sit on it. <laughs> Some of my fun DIYs, your sliding closet doors, they're just prime for decoration. So I went and got me a $5 mirror, and then kind of like channeling my Carmion Hamilton, the stickers on my closet, I ordered them from Etsy. But the DIY that I'm most proud of is the stools that I usually sit on uh, at my desk. In my home, the home I had for 18 years, my mother made curtains for me. When I took them down, they had they were old and tattered. So I had my cousin, who's a reupholsterer and woodworker, take the stools that I bought from Home Goods, and she reupholstered them for me. So now my mama's in here, and I get to sit on something that she created and something that I created. So we kind of did it together. If you look closely, you'll see tree branches throughout my space, and those tree branches come from trees that are significant to me. So the one that hangs over my bed that has a dream catcher on it, the tree branch came from the tree that lived in front of my home. When it would storm, I would pray to the tree and ask, you know, my ancestors to protect me and the tree. But when it would shed leaves or shed branches, I would take them and put them in the home. Be open to using nature as uh, part of your home decor. It's significant, it means something to you, you know. Pick it up, pick it up and dust it off. Make sure there's no bugs on it, <laughs> but bring it in and um, celebrate it, celebrate nature. What I like most about my kitchen is that it's small. The most enjoyable aspect of um, curating my space was seeing how my old mementos fit in the space like the quilt. When I saw the big blank wall in the kitchen, I said, I found a space. And so now that serves as my, you know, backdrop for my cafe where I have my morning coffee and bagels when I do decide to cook at home. It's a cultural thing for black Americans to have the fork and spoon. I had a, a gentleman who was an antiquer find these for me. It's art in itself and I just, you know, I might not cook as much in there, but at least I have a fork and spoon to remind me that I need to eat. <laughs>
I used to live in a 800 square foot home. When I walked in here and I saw that it was um, this big white box, I immediately felt uh, safe here. I knew that I could curate a great small space because I kind of like moved out of my main bedroom in my old house and stayed in my smaller bedroom for about a year. I was getting rid of some energy from my old lover. It really only took me about three months to pull it all together. So when you come into my home, you'll notice a theme. There's a theme color here, and the theme color is pretty much orange. And it's been inspired by a photo of my mother that I've had since I was, yeah, I would say in my 20s, she gifted the photo to me. She was still alive, and um, it was this photo of her with a head wrap on. That photo has been the key gem to how I decorate. I needed that energy here. And so my mother's all around. She's definitely on my altar. Uh, which is in the kitchen. I feel my mother here, even though, you know, we share that other space for so long, but I feel her in everything that I do. Home to me means safety. It was important for me to create a safe space for myself, for my healing. What I learned um, about myself through creating this space is that it can be bold, it can have pattern, it can have texture, and still feel safe, and make me feel like there's hope. I'm a former prison transportation provider. I used to take families to visit loved ones who were incarcerated. So out of the prison work, I kind of got burnt out and realized I needed to do different healing. I decided to become a massage therapist in this space, right? So it's career changing. It is, it's, it's revolutionary. It's really cultivated my sense of urgency to be soft, right? You hear the word soft life. I've created a soft life for myself, you know, and, and I'm proud of it because there was a time when I didn't think that this was possible, right? To feel safe in a city that um, through media and through gentrification is telling you you don't belong, right? Your time is up here move out, we need something new here. It's beautifully ugly, right? It's very beautiful, but it has some ugly parts. And, um, and I'm still here and I'm thriving and I'm, I'm able to create beauty in some ugliness. You know, even if I do a massage here, I'm treating folks who have PTSD like me and they have, they too feel the safety, they feel the love, they feel the healing and I know it's because the energy of my mother, the fact that I've curated a space where you can, you know, feel comfortable in. And, um, you know, I got these hands. 